Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy Newsbeat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. This is the daily stand-up for January 11th, uh, 2024. I'll tell you what, the time is flying. We've got an action-packed discussion today. Hooties fire their greatest barrage of weapons to date on the ongoing sea, Red Sea shipping crisis. What's going to happen there? Shipping costs will be impacting hugely. Russia announces, are you ready? R announces th 30 new member countries for BRICS. Wow. Uh, oil and gas lobby warns against U.S. slowing down of LNG approvals. This is actually pretty frightening as we're seeing what the administration is doing with some really silly decisions. Energy absurdity in Germany, cutting emissions through economic collapse. This is related to that first story. Regulatory actions um, actually could backfire into both economies, Germany and the U.S., Let's go with the Hooties first, fire their uh, greatest barrage of weapons uh, to the ongoing Red Sea shipping crisis. This is actually frightening when you sit back and take a look at it. Um, let's see. The military complex attack consisted of 18 attack drones and two anti-ship cruise missiles, one anti-ship ballistic missile. Wow. Wow. They were all shot down by F-18 aircraft from the uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, aircraft carrier. Three destroyers and one British destroyer. That's amazing. But you know what the sad part is? Uh, let's see, a $20,000 drone versus a couple million dollar uh, armament against it. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. A Let's see. Not only fuel cost emissions are higher for a Cape uh, voyage, but there's an additional cost with a newly introduced emissions trading scheme from the EU. A ship leaving uh, Colombo in Sri Lanka uh, for Barcelona would be liable for twice the amount of carbon credits if transfer transitioning via the Cape rather than Suez Canal, uh, corresponding to an additional $82,000 per container ship. That's just amazing. I, uh, you sit back and take a look at carbon tax. Uh, it's just a tax for the wealthy so they can redistribute and uh, put it into funds and then move it around wherever they want. The, uh, the, the other article also addresses this as well. Rising shipping costs will impact oil and LNG, not only just the shipping costs that you uh, heard me talk about. Approximately 8.2 million barrels per day of crude uh, go through the Red Sea uh, between January and November 2023. That's a ton. And you sit back and take a look at S&P Global uh, Commodity, 16.2 million metric tons, accounting for 51% of all LNG trade has been shipped east through the Suez Canal. Um, this is going to be an awful lot. So you sit back and think about the Houthis are not helping out ESG at all. So Houthis are definitely against ESG, and they're not good for the uh, environment. So not only will this impact oil and LNG, those costs are going to get embedded back into that price and you, the consumer, are going to be uh, tagged with it. The price of shipping a container from East Asia to the Mediterranean has risen by 44% from December 2023. 44% per container. Uh, talk about some inflation. So it's amazing what uh, terrorism will do. Uh, just, it is just amazing. 
So as we take a look at, at that, you've got the hoodies firing, you've got the shipping cost co co uh, covering, but they're related because the carbon tax is also having to be charged on longer voyages. This part is really kind of wild when you say Russia announces 30 new member countries for BRICS. Wow. BRICS started out with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and it is expanding out. It is going to be well over half the population of the world before too long at all. This is a huge financial uh, agreement between these um, countries. Uh, it is going to take the U.S. dollar down. People are saying it's not going to happen soon. I think it's going to happen sooner than later based off of our geopolitical issues. Take a look at this one. Uh, Putin being the president, it's going to be pretty interesting. He's the president of BRICS this year. Along this same story thread, oil and gas lobby groups warns against U.S. slowing down uh, LNG approvals. This part is really kind of sad, and it folds into the ESG portion and the carbon credits. This is Halting U.S. LNG approvals would put our allies at risk. This would not be, uh, this should not be controversial, Summer said, an API event uh, focused on top issues. Uh, uh, the head of the API. So if you sit back and think of, we are really helping replace Russian uh, natural gas. Germany has, that I'm going to talk about in this next one, has suffered because of the lack of natural gas and it's wiped out their, their businesses, their economy. Um, the Biden administration is prompting uh, the, the main uh, oil and gas. The Department of Energy is leading an effort to determine whether federal regulators should factor in climate change considerations, whether to decide proposed gas port export project meets the national interest talk about legislation through regulatory actions and this is despicable um i'm all in on good regulations i'm all in on being able to take care of the environment but what you're going to do is you're going to be harming other people all the way around the world and you're gonna actually cause more damage to the environment by then not having an actual open discussion about it. It's very, very sad. And here's why. Energy absurdity in Germany, cutting emissions through economic collapse. This is really a, a very important uh, point that um, uh, David Blackman brought out uh, Bjorn Lomberg pointed out Germans are now consuming less electricity per capita than they did in 1978. This graph, uh, Ms. Producer, if you could pull this in, you can see that in 1978, it was about 650 watts, 680 watts uh, per um, citizen. Here's where the reason that it's come down is because it's too expensive for them to do anything. And so when you take a look at the loss of businesses that have shut down, the fact that everybody is having to turn the heat way down, their uh, energy consumption is down, so are their emissions. But they're going into a recession, and I've heard the depression word Instead of providing low-cost energy, they are absolutely destroying their economy. I thought the comment was, was right on. Is it on purpose uh, or is it stupidity? I, I'm not sure. I'm going to let you all decide on that one. If you have any comments uh, or suggestions, please let us know. If you're an industry thought leader, if you're a CEO of an energy company, I want to talk to you. So thank you and sign, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your pets, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.